So if you've got those two 1s orbitals of hydrogen molecule, uh, well, two hydrogen atoms coming together, right? And they've got 1s orbital, 1s orbital, and when they come together, the electron from hydrogen, from the one hydrogen, the electron from the other one, well, where do they go again? Well, they take up positions in a bond, right? And we always write a bond here between the two elements. And what we're really describing is that when these two orbitals overlap with one another, here's a nucleus here with one proton and one electron, uh, one proton over here. So what's going on? Well, there's an electron here, an electron here. Where do they like to be? Well, they like to be, of course, their opposite spins, as we know. So I hope you can just see that. that the, the one pointing downward and one pointing upward. We've got opposite spin electrons. They occupy the space between the two nuclei, which is the lowest energy position in the molecule to occupy between the two nuclei. They can opposite spin, so they can exist in that space. Now remember, these orbitals, they overlap, sure, but then they don't really exist as an overlap state. What we get is now a molecular orbital that forms, so bleh, then we get something, I don't know, maybe it looks like that, who knows. But the point is that here are the two nuclei, where are the two electrons? Well, they're going to be, in the, the, the bond that keeps everything together is going to be where an electron is here and here, in between the two nuclei. Lowest energy position possible. Okay, well, you know what? We can draw something called an energy level diagram that actually describes what's going on here too, in a very rudimentary fashion. Take a look. Here is hydrogen, and here is the electron in this one's 1s orbital, but here's the electron in the other hydrogen's 1s orbital. Two hydrogens are coming together. Now what's happening? As the two electrons are coming together, here, well the electrons are coming together, it's the, the electron attracted the proton here, and the proton here attracting the other electron here. Da -da 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 -da. As the bond is forming, energy is being released. And so, when these two come together, they are going to now sit, choink, in an orbital together. We call that a molecular orbital. And in this 1s molecular orbital, what we've got is electrons coming together and occupying this space, which is now a low energy position, because remember, their energy is being released when the bond forms. And so we call that right there the energy level diagram for H2. Now, did you know that actually hydrogen could also be made into an H2 with a negative 1 charge? And what does that mean? Well, you would know this. Then that means, well, hydrogen's in group 1 times 2. There's two hydrogens, so that's two valence electrons, but there's an extra electron, that's 3. So that means then that there would be another electron here. Well, where would it go? Because now, maybe this one has an H with two electrons, and this one is one. They're coming, to, <laughs> they're coming together to be able to make a molecule that's got three electrons in it. But where are these electrons going to go? Two of them can only go into one of these orbitals called a molecular orbital down here. Oh, man. Well, if that's the case, then where's that other electron? It's not in between the nuclei. No, it's outside somewhere. So it wouldn't be actually in between. Now, what are we going to call that? Well, if these are, this is a bonding area, we're going to call that the bonding orbital. And that means that this is a higher energy position called an anti-bonding orbital. It's kind of against bonding, right? So we've got to put the electron somewhere, so we put it out here because it can't go in there, the molecule will fly apart. So here's the thing. We put that electron up here. Now what have we got? we've got an electron in the 1s molecular orbital. So that's an MO, a molecular orbital here, but there's another one in the 1s, and we're going to call that, and, it's a, and this orbital here is going to be called the antibonding orbital. We're going to put an asterisk there to identify it as an antibonding orbital. But here's the thing. Is this a totally legitimate molecule? And the reason is yes, and here's how you can figure it out. By something called the bond order calculation. So, what does it mean? What is it that you, uh, what, how do you calculate a bond order? Just, here's the definition. Take the total of bonding electrons and subtract from it the anti-bonding electrons and divide everything by two. So watch. The bond order here is two bonding electrons minus one anti-bonding electrons divided by two. What do you get? Two minus one is one divided by two is a half. The bond order is a half. If the bond order is zero, then you don't, or zero or less, then you don't have a bond. Then that molecule doesn't exist. Then you can't make that molecule. 
Huh? Like, for instance? Oh, this is so beautiful. Watch this. What if this was helium? And we said, oh, two helium atoms are coming together. Well, if two helium atoms, which both have two electrons in each of their 1s orbitals, if they're going to bond together, here's what's going to have to happen. You're going to have to have, because helium is, in, is going to have two valence electrons and two for a total of four, you're going to have to have two in the bonding and two electrons here in the antibonding areas. I might just do that, right? Which means if an HE and an HE are coming together, two electrons here go into the bonding, but two in the antibonding. Two minus two over two is zero. And that means this. The bond order is saying, by that calculation, that that molecule doesn't exist. Hey, guess what? Helium is a noble gas. Noble gases don't like to bond to anything. So if somebody says to you, is helium a diatomic molecule, you'd know right away the answer was no, because inert gases or noble gases on the periodic table don't like to bond under normal circumstances to each other or anything else. We just actually figured out by the calculation of bond order that that's very true. That's pretty cool.